and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 220. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is the man with the plan, Daniel Anthony. Congrats on 220 episodes, Norman. I am proud of you. Yay, I feel loved. Uh, remember back in the days when this episode was like in the double digits? Oh yes, I remember the single digits. <laughs> Were you on a single digits? Yeah, I, I was, I was on episode 7, that was my first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, sure time fly. Oh yes, it does. If you think about it, 7 and then you plus a week and then, oh wow, Whew, we'll be going for so long now. Yep. So also joining us is the lurking of cats in the corner there. Lurker cat. Stop! Favorite cat Ooh. is in the house. What up? What up? Not much, not much. I just came back from the meet with the Highland Bronies in the land of Inverness. It was fun. New faces. Lots of face touching times. Much yes. Mm. Yay, that's much fun. Yes, it is. Creeps them out, but I had fun. <laughs> yeah, you're living up to your name. All right. <laughs> I did. I did. So, anyway, we got an amazing show for you guys today. And before we officially start, then it's been a while since you've been on. Oh yes. When was the last time again? When we were talking about you, was it again? Uh, was it the uh, Tridashi Ex- episode? Yeah. Yeah, French Express. Yes, Tridashi episode. That was a good one. Oh yes, I love that show. I miss Tridashi. I haven't talked to him in a while. <laughs> yeah, everyone's busy. If I do understand right, BronyCon is coming around the corner really, really soon. Yes, less than two weeks. In fact, mm-hmm. two weeks now will be in its second day. <laughs> oh. And if I do remember, I'm, you know me scrolling through the EQDs and um, first news for today, BronyCon announced schedule, escape room and Asian delegates. Like I played this, no, I seen the escape room, it's such a fun concept, like this is going to be fun. Like whoever's going to BronyCon should try the Brony version of the escape room. Uh, much, much fun, much fun. It'll be all chaos. We checked out the escape room and uh, uh, on the list, and it's pretty interesting. You're going to need a team of eight to go in, and it costs $30 per person if you <laughs> register before BronyCon, but 35 if you're there. So if you're thinking about it, stop thinking. Register now. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those fun things to do. Like, if you then you go with four of your friends, you should register. And I think you can do four, because um, I'm seeing... Uh, we're four to eight players. So no, you can four, do four. Well, if you go in with four, they'll pair you up with the rest remaining. Ah, yeah. With okay, whoever what's... doesn't have a partner. But I tell you, if I walk in with four friends, I don't think they'll be my friends after the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's fun. It's still fun. You can know more people. You know, you can know more people. And here's another one. Um, the Asian delegates. Um, I'm not sure about this one because, uh, well. Did you um, not read the post? <laughs> I tried. And, uh, well, Norman, I, Norman, Norman. <laughs> I, I skimmed down a bit, and I'm noticing something here because um, I'm noticing Crystal Empire records and Philippines and also names that I know. Like Dan, what 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 is this? Like the Crystal Empire? What's that? Crystal Empire? You don't know what the Crystal Empire is? Which season was the last you watched? <laughs> I know, I'm just digging this in. <laughs> well, Crystal Empire Records is the Brony record label for Southeast Asia that a f- bunch of friends and I run that have been doing um, albums for, to raise funds for pony conventions in the region. And the Asian delegation is where a few of us, including me, are going to be speaking at BronyCon. Woohoo! So, nice. you're going to BronyCon, aren't you? Uh, no, they're sending my spirit there and injecting it into another person. You're astral ah. projecting, yo. It's easier for travel costs and such. Yeah, I know. That's so much easier. Like, I wish yeah, I could know, do that. They see my passport. They're not going to let me in. <laughs> yeah, that's if they see you, Jen. But anyway, so <laughs> you want to <laughs> explain about this? Like, tell me, what's all this about? Okay, so essentially, the Brony fandom is really something that's become global. There's like people... Fr- across the world who have been on this very show, which is housed in Johor in Malaysia. And we want to show that off because we've been bronies for years and we've seen how this fandom has grown. And a lot of people in the US, from what I remember, some people say, oh, there are Asians who are in this fandom. Like, yes, they are mm-hmm. Asians in this fandom. And we're going to be at BronyCon to tell you all about it. Because just like the West or the US or Europe, we have pony conventions. They have pony conventions. We have pony conventions. They have art. We have art. They have comics, we have comics, they have fanfic, we have fanfic. We have got a fandom running here as well. So yep, yep. it's time to make you know, these two ends meet and to show, yeah, this fandom has really come full circle. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. All right. International fandom for the win. Celebrate it yeah. all. All yeah. of it. All right. 
Yep, yep. So anyway, what could we expect there? Because if I do understand right, like it's going to be a panel, and like I said, what is it going to be all about? Well, the panel is going to talk about mainly what we do over here as a fandom, how different it is from the Western side of things. But most importantly, if you come for our panel, you're going to want to, you know, get to experience the Asian pony fandom at a whole new level. That's why if you're at the Asian delegation, we have got stuff to give you. Mm. What can we expect, man? What can we expect? We've got mini art prints by Brony artists over here in Asia. We've got we've got artists who have helped us out from Indonesia, from KL, from Singapore, Philippines, Thailand. We've got art from them and yep, it's on the house. So come on over to the panel if you're going to BronyCon on a budget and you don't think you're going to be walking away with anything. Think again. This is your chance. Yeah. Do you have anything from Celine? Because Celine's nice. She's awesome. Her art's good. I would say not quite, but oh. in a way we do. Yeah, 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 still good. Like, her art's good. Like, you should really look at her stuff. I hope you can promote her there. Oh, yes, we will. Yay. What oh, about... I wish I could go now. I want some of this stuff. <laughs> yep, yep. So, what about music? Like, you did mention the Crystal Empire record. So, yep. do you have anything for music? We are putting together a special album to bring along to this convention. And uh, we'll be putting it up really soon online, so stay tuned for that. Nice, nice. And what about this thing called the podcast? Like, is there anything? Oh, yes, we'll mention it because, wow, you guys have been running for 220 episodes. You're like, it's impossible to not notice you guys. Oh, I'm sure people try hard. <laughs> and you know, it's it's going to be, the other thing is like, it's surprising sometimes for think for projects like the MBS show and projects like Ponyhoof, when we say that, hey, you guys know these? Yeah, they're made in Malaysia. Hmm... Yeah, I mean, like, the MBS show, it's like one of those cases, like, hey, isn't that the show that Silver Quill's on? <laughs> <laughs> Taking over yeah. everything. Vampire yeah. advertising. That's yeah. kitchen. <laughs> I know. Uh, but still, but still, um, uh, Silver Quill is an awesome dude. I, I, oh, yes. He didn't force himself in. I tie him up <laughs> and make him do it. <laughs> You and your dungeon, Norman. Seriously, I you know. can't keep people in the dungeon. But it's, it's not fun. Kosher. It's not, just give, not just give it a few days. You'll roll a pair of snake eyes and everything will come out. I know. Oh, my. It's, I don't call it the dungeon. I call it the fungeon. Dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, congratulations on going to BronyCon, Dan, and also your panel at BronyCon because... Going to BronyCon is one thing, but going there and doing a panel is another. And wow, like, still awesome news, man. Like, this is, I, poof, what can I say? I'm proud. Like, this is, this has been your project since day one. I would say since BronyCon opened their uh, panel listings, because originally I wanted to be like, can we just go somewhere where there is a big pony fandom and tell them, hey, we exist. And I wanted to do that for a long time, but... I thought, actually, when, when BronyCon opened up their panel applications, I thought, why would a, a panel would be a great place to do something like this, so why not? Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Yep. And just going there, because I remember back in the days when you had this project about going to BronyCon, like, let's go, let's go, let's try, let's, let's do it. And now, you guys are doing it. I was part of the team too, but uh, let's just say that the nephew was born in Australia and I have to go. <laughs> I understand, but Bro BronyCon has always been the pinnacle of this fandom. It, you know, nothing has ever come close to what BronyCon has ever brought to the convention scene. But that, that said, because of this, Norman, BronyCon mm -hmm. is going to be around apparently until 2024. You've got more chances coming up, so don't give up. Oh, yeah, true. I mean, I'm going to try and go there, given the time and financial, because the Malaysian ringgit is not that strong. Yeah, it's all financial talk, and I don't want to bore people. So, um, with that footnote, I'm going to end on a high. Congratulations, Dan. And I hope you guys have fun. And get merch. Like, buy all the merch. Like, you know your last days at BronyCon? Spend it all there, and then just done. Spend it all, then go home. Actually, um... BronyCon is not the end of the journey. What? Yeah. Um, dun, dun, dun. If, in fact, <laughs> if you can't make it to BronyCon or you miss our panel, we'll give you a second chance. We're actually going to be at TrotCon the very next week. Yo! 
noise. So, um, unfortunately, the whole panel, uh, some of them have to go back early and some of them are headed home after BronyCon. But I'll be still presenting the same stuff we presented at BronyCon at 2 p.m. Mm. Oh, yeah, I haven't announced what time <laughs> it is at BronyCon that I'm presenting. Yeah, Good what time God. is it? <laughs> Uh, the panel is at 10 a.m. on Saturday, the 9th of July in Hall of the Planets. That's where we're going to be. Hall of the Planets. Yes. Going to be in space. No, you're going to be with Captain Planet. Space! <laughs> <I> love space. <laughs> He's our hero. <laughs> yeah, you, can, zero. You, you can find us at the Hall of the Planets on the 9th of July, Saturday, 10 a.m. It's the first panel of the day. Oh, wow. And... As I said, if you miss out on that, don't be afraid. Just come up to me, say hi. You know, I'll be walking around BronyCon as well. I mean, I went there for BronyCon. I'm not going anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And in the event you you can't you miss out, you can't make it to BronyCon, we will be at TrotCon the very next week on a s- Saturday at 2 p.m. in Salon B to C, which is in the workshop room. We will I, actually not we I because the rest of my panel is going to be busy or going home. Be presenting the same thing again. Ooh. And yes, if you miss out on the giveaways, if we have any more after BronyCon has had their turn, we'll be bringing some as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, I hope you guys have fun, like BronyCon, TrotCon, awesome times. And you know where to find them. At BronyCon, it's on the Planet Hall, was it? Hall of the Planets. Yeah, Hall of the Planets, 10 a.m. on a Saturday night. Yes. And on TrotCon... Uh, 2 p.m. Where is it again? Saturday, 2 p.m. Uh, salon B to C. You, uh, so, um, I'm sure there's going to be a post somewhere on the EQDs or in the show notes here. So, yeah, do remember that and write it down. Remember, remember. Remember, tattoo it to your forehead. Never nah, forget. Don't never do that. forget. Don't do that. Don't Why do not? that. Why not? Tattoo be permanent. No, you, I mean, you, if you... The, the last time someone did something with a marker pen at BronyCon, that was Animated James, and he got yelled at by some guy telling him, oh, that's not good for health. <laughs> yeah. It's not health. You only live once. YOLO! <laughs> you only BronyCon once. I mean, like, there's a lot of things that are yes. bad for health that we still do. Uh, exactly. But, but, like, things only going once. Um, this thing that's not going once is the My Little Pony movie. Mm-hmm. Whoa. The official logo has been announced or has been shown and oh my god, it's so shiny. It looks so awesome. It's coming closer. It's real. You know, it's going to happen. Uh, so if you do not know or you didn't know, the My Little Pony movie is coming out next year and an official logo has been, well, shown. Um, the logo is a bit, I won't say different, Aesthetic. Yes, it's it has the bling. Yeah, it has a lot of blings and the movie thing. I don't know. I don't really like it because it's hmm. the end. It's very bland. Mm, yeah, here's the thing. Like, couldn't they come up with a better title? Because I am pretty sure that that is not the f- complete title. It's like Equestria Girls. <sighs> probably ha- no, Equestria Girls didn't Equestria have Girls a title for the first one. Yeah, I mean technically it's called Through the Mirror, but. Yeah, but yeah. that was not under the poster. But True, still, that but wasn't. Still. But still, uh, but then again, it, it's the it's the balance between making it obviously MLP and making it something more elaborate. Yeah, true that, true that. But talking about obviously MLP, you won't expect this guy to well be on an MLP movie because you remember Sabretooth from the X Men Wolverine Origins movie. Oh uh-huh. yes. Yeah, Levy. Uh, Sir, Sir, Schreiber. Schreiber. Yeah, Schreiber. Yeah, um, he recently went on the Jimmy Kimball show and talked about his, you know, his acting career and whatnot. And one of the things that he mentioned to, uh, Jimmy is that he wants his kids to see him in a movie. And usually most of his movies are him being a very, very bad boy. And yep, he geez. thought that Showing the Wolverine movie would be good. Yeah, if you remember what happened to Will I Am, no, no. So yeah, an opportunity came up for him to play a role in a kids show, the My Little Pony kids show, because usually his roles, when he gets them, he's always the bad guy. So in a kids show, what what can you be, right? Like you can be almost anything. Like you can be the fluffy unicorn, you can be the flying beautiful Pegasus. 
in the My Little Pony. You get to be the PG thirteen controlled bad guy. It's like <laughs> yeah. the fourth the fourth wall has got this shackle on you. <laughs> it's not the fourth wall. I I think it's a stereotype or um what's they call it role. Um, have you heard of this? Have you heard of this uh, headcanon somebody what? had that they really wanted Deadpool to appear in uh, an X Men movie, mm-hmm. and it would be like this case where Deadpool's only allowed to swear once because of um you know mm-hmm. PG thirteen. And the whole movie, he's only allowed to swear once, and in the end, Wolverine swears instead. And he's like, "Dude, no!" <laughs> he's like, he like he wants to swear. He just has to control himself because he's saving it for the best moment to say it. Yeah, but that would be cool. But nah. So anyway, Saber Tooth is going to play a bad guy in the My Little Pony movie. So it's from what I understand, his lines are finished recording. So yay, uh, we'll have to... we got a mutant coming <laughs> our way with um. Yeah, jeez, what the heck? Yeah, I don't know what's going to be, but this is cool. I can't wait. So, Sabretooth is going to be playing a bad guy in the show. Yay! Yay! I want to see how that plays yeah, out. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Uh. Mm-hmm. I can already imagine the fan art. <laughs> <laughs> I can as well. Saber I mean, I can, I can imagine, like, this whole, all the, the X-Men, you know, especially the main characters, all in their pony form, and there's this placeholder oh. waiting to be inserted. Remember back in the days? <laughs> uh, remember the back in the days? There's this one uh, exclusive comic cover for, I, I don't know what comic, I think it's X-Men. I know, it's Deadpool. It's Deadpool. It's a Deadpool cover, and there's a bunch of X-Men characters uh, in pony form. Remember that one? I think I do. Yeah, yes. it's not really artistically with ponies like MLP style. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's kind of yeah, like stylistic like alternate yeah. format, but it's hidden. Yeah, so it's like, oh, that's so cool. Like, oh, really? What this one? Because like that pony is so cute, especially with uh, the Deadpool's. Yeah, so that's cool. And talking about comics, good segue there. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. So it seems that we're gonna get a crossover comic cover. And the crossover is going to be The Wizard of Oz. And, ooh. Oh, that is delicious. And this exclusive variant is exclusive for Fright Pie Comics Store, I think. Yes, it's them. So anyway, this comic cover is really interesting. And I got no idea what the story is about. But I would love this comic cover. It features Sunset Shimmer and Trixie as The Wizard of Oz. And... Trixie is playing the role as the wizard. What is his name again? Anyone? As you would expect. He's just the great and powerful Oz. The Wizard of Oz. Because she's the great and powerful Trixie. <laughs> yeah, you got that. And Sunset Shimmer being Dorothy. Yay! This comic is going to be around the 20th of July. So expect to get it if you are at a Fright Pie comic store. Awesome on you because... Yay! I think you can buy it online. Ooh, that's even more interesting. You buy everything online, you know where to yeah, search. Yeah, true that. Oh, this is a Tumblr page. Yeah, you could buy it there if you want to. Yes, we're here. And, look, you noticed something, right? Yeah, I'm noticing there's spike and rarity on the front as well, and the statue is like, that's cute. Yeah, and this comic cover is done by Agnes Garboska, who is an artist for the comic. And she ah. tweeted something like, just a heads up, if it made it to print, there may be a change on the Trixie and Sunset Shimmer cover. Hope it made it in time. So, what could that be? Like it. But I like it as it is. It's so cute. I don't know. I mean, this could be the first, uh, before the revision or after the revision. We've got no idea. So, we have to wait and see. It's still cute. Especially Sunset and the little Dorothy dress and their shoes. It's like, oh. Yeah, but still, oh, I can't wait to see what's this comic all about. Because remember back in the days when we had the first issue of the My Little Pony comics, uh, we had the derpy variant, and wow, did that really sold out really quick. <laughs> I bet it yep. did. But still, but still, um, I can't wait. I want to read this comic. And yeah, we're going to get an awesome comic cover. It's been a while. It's been a while. You'll be reviewing this as well, then, as Norman? Per usual, this comic? As per usual. I always review all of the comics, no matter how good, bad, or awesome it is. Shall I wait for this one, then? Indeedy. Um, anyway, that's the news for this week. And I think, well, we ran off course. We're almost at the 30-minute marks. So, yay! We're 
keeping up time. That's good because people don't really want us to go for that long if we are not interesting enough. Yes. I suppose people have short attention spans. I mean, I know I've got short attention spans. Yeah. Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Roughly. Good one. 30, 30, minutes good one. Good one. Thirty minutes is a long attention span. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm looking at mine like thirty seconds. <laughs> Yeah, but still, but still, we 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 did good on time. We did good on time. But before we leave, then want to remind the people at home who forgot stuff about you, like where to go to meet you at the Brony Cons and Trotcon. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, those of you who have thirty second attention spans like me, once again, the place to meet: 9th July, ten a.m. Hall of the Planets at Brony Con. If you don't know where that is, it's the Baltimore Convention Center. You're gonna need a ticket to go in because it's Brony Con. It's not free. Uh. If you miss out on that one, just feel free to say hi to me at the convention. Uh, don't disturb me if I'm at a panel, but I can wait. <laughs> uh, if you miss out on that, you can see us at TrotCon 2 p.m. on Saturday, which is the... Good Lord, what is the date? I am terrible with numbers. Despite <laughs> representing an Asian panel. <laughs> uh, I, Dan, to be honest, you're not the... Asian that's good with uh, numbers. You're the one with good with technology. You always ask I'm them to turn things off and on again. Yeah, I'm half Indian. That's why. Crowd guy. <laughs> well, I'm Chinese Indian, so yeah, I have the worst of both worlds. I speak Chinese, but nobody understands. Oh wow! <laughs> but anyway, um, you... I mean, I, I mean, it, it's something that happens in the office. I, I ask someone a question in Chinese, they answer back in machine gun. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But um, you got that panel for TrotCon? Yes, 16th of July at TrotCon, which is happening in Columbus, Ohio. That will be at 2 p.m. in Salon B2C. So remember, folks, do visit Dan, say hello. Tell them that the MBS show sent you there to uh, say the hellos. And demand high fives. Oh, yes, I shall high five as a proxy yeah. for Norman. And hoof bumps. Yep. Has to happen. Oh, yes. If things goes according to plan, you may receive a MBI show card telling you to listen to us. <laughs> yes, we you will. get the card. Cherish yeah. Like, mm-hmm. just, I don't know, just have fun. Like, um, it'd probably be a business card where you can listen to the show and whatnot. Like, then don't forget to give it to the celebrities. Like, give them the card. <laughs> oh, yes, I'll drop. And, um, okay. The thing is, one of the other things that we're going to be doing at this panel is that we're going to be announcing some fresh plans for Asian bronies Mm. for 2017. Because, you know, 2017 is a year that's where the fandom goes into its sixth year of existence. You know, MLP is going to turn seven years old in 2017. It's going to be a big thing for this fandom. And in Southeast Asia over here, we also have come a long way. In fact, for some of you who have been keeping score, we, uh, as at the Friendship Express this year, which is happening in November, mm-hmm. Southeast Asia would have had its 12th convention. Ooh, wow. wow. Yes, a 12th pony convention. It, it seems like, oh, there's some people say, oh, there are no pony conventions in Asia. Oh, there are no pony conventions in Asia. And 12th pony convention in Southeast Asia, not counting Japan PonyCon, not counting PonyCon Russia, not, co- uh, not counting those, just Southeast Asia alone among five countries. In fact, four. Mm, wow. And if you remember, right, uh, I think Japan PonyCon had two conventions. One was Nippon and one was Japan PonyCon. I, I don't remember. It's something like that. I think they've had more than two already. Yeah. So if you, if you total up, Asia already is holding at least 20 conventions, I believe. You know, if you count uh, Thai PonyCon, if you count Russian, the Russian PonyCons, we could be at 20, if not it's at least 15. You count Australia? Australia's not Asia, right? Uh, no, uh, Australia is, uh, is uh, Australia is honestly. Right, right. It's own because I do remember but, back uh, in the days, they were part of the Asias, right? They're Asia Pacific yeah. in a sense. So yeah, uh, we, are, we have come a long way as a fandom in this part of the world. So... You know, if you want to find out what we are thinking about doing, what we are, what we have planned for next year, just drop on over to the panel. We've got that presentation lined up for you. If you miss out on BronyCon, remember you can catch it at TrotCon. And if you oversleep or something happened on Saturday, you needed to go somewhere, we will be doing it one final time at TrotCon on Sunday at 12 p.m. Well, not exactly at 12 p.m. because 12 p.m. is actually... Um, a forum called The Future of Brony Music, which will be hosted by Crystal Empire Records. Yep. Uh, we'll be presenting at TrotCon on uh, Sunday at 
12 p.m. in the main hall, the Grand Ballroom. It will be after the Crystal Empire Records Forum titled The Future of Brony Music because we're going to talk about the future of Brony Music and we're going to talk about the future of the fandom in Southeast Asia which involves Crystal Empire Records and Brony Music in the region. So, yep, you've got three chances to come and see what we are going to do. Awesome, awesome. And is this going to be on record like how BronyCon usually records their stuff? I don't know if BronyCon will be recording me. We are trying to find a way to record it. I've got my cameras and stuff. So hopefully, you know, this, things go all right. Yeah. I don't get thrown out <laughs> or something like that. All right, you then. <laughs> it should be yeah. fine. But um, a fun fact, by the way, I don't know if any of you know this, but TrotCon is a convention that runs from 1 p.m. on Friday to 5.30 p.m. on Sunday nonstop. Ooh. The convention goes around the clock. There's things happening every hour from 1 p.m. on Friday all the way to 5 p.m. on Sunday. So wait, this is almost a 24-hour... Wait, it is a 24-hour convention. It's more than 24 hours. It's almost almost 30 hours. Wow. Jeez. Yeah, it's a really, really long convention. It's There's things happening... Just right around the clock, like, you know, the first day you start with the opening ceremony and um, there's going to be stuff on the first day opening ceremony. There's a panel by I Love Kim Possible a lot. She's the she's a guest star at the convention. Uh, it goes all the way in. There's YouTube poop at night. It's Who's Line that runs all the way into Saturday morning at 12 a.m. And then, you know, it, it goes on again. People are talking about things like, you know, game design. And there are some things here that I really don't understand in TrotCon's... Uh, up. There are people, there are, it's like Cantina Con, there's Magic, there's the Tao of MLP. I'm like, these things are really interesting. I've got to, I've got to stop by some of these. These sound like really, really cool things. And if you do go to, well, either or, say hi to Dan. And one more thing, Dan, this is a request from me to you. Uh, if you do go to BronyCon, meet with the Silver Quill. Say hello, say who you are, say where you're from, and give him the business card or the card. I tell you what, you tell Silver Quill to come to my panel. I should do that. Yeah. I will do that. Yeah, Norman. I, do this. I will thing. do that. And if you do notice, well, <laughs> you don't know how Silver Quill looks like, so it's going to be really dumb. So, but yeah, just say that. Okay, okay. How about how 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 about this? Ask him to jump up and say, um, "I like potato chips," and then I'll know who it is. <laughs> what well, everyone does this now, Dan? Everyone that comes to your show is like, "I like potato chips." I'm like you're all Silver Quill, all of us here in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm right. Okay, meet up with me on Monday after the con. We're gonna go to Walmart and get some potato chips. You're gonna show me how this Walmart thing works because I've never been to one. (laughs) So anyway, I'll we'll deal. We'll think of something. Like we'll do the funsies there. So yeah, (laughs) (laughs) maybe I don't know. I'm like, yeah, maybe we're not promising anything. The NBA show does not promise. (laughs) The NBA show does not promise any actions from Daniel Anthony or Silver Quill. Uh, all we do know is that potato <laughs> chip will be involved. <laughs> Wave well, you, can promise, you can promise my panel. Yes, panels shall happen. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's pre- gonna happen. I don't know about silver. Yeah, pa- panels will happen. Um, we don't know about silver, but I do know that potato <laughs> chips will be involved. <laughs> wave of potato chips. It'll be in the news. Yep. Accident at Bonicon. Potato chip wave happened. Many drowned and salted oh. chips. This is my panel. Yo, then, um, I, I'll be surprised if the next rave of Bonicon would be potato chips. Like, I'll be really surprised. Yeah. All right. They will have a moment of the potato yeah. chip war. And Remember, just, like, there's the one dollar water chip guy. Chip Everyone will come. I mean, who, who doesn't yeah. like chips? Remember the one dollar water yeah, guy? Yeah. That, that was a thing. And... Oh, yeah. yes. I, I actually already have a particular one dollar note that I am going to be giving to him. Like, I've kept that note <laughs> in my wallet since we first made plans for Brunch I'm like, I kept it for three years for you, man. Like, dude, do you want, do you want a contract with Crystal Empire? <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure someone beaten me to yeah. it already, but yeah. And then remember the fun train that happened the day in the, the year next, like yeah. Fun train, like fun, fun, fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like I mean, Bronicon is actually pretty scary to be honest. It's huge. It is massive. I cannot fathom how big Bronicon yep. is because ten thousand attendees is. Yep. Wow. It's it's an it's That's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. It's got six halls. There, there the is hall a lot. Of the sun, <laughs> hall of the moon, hall of the stars, hall of the planets, hall of chaos, and the main hall. It's just, it's just so many things that are going to be happening. In fact, the halls are just part of it. Outside, there's the renegade stage, and there's other things. Oh, so wow. yeah, it's it's huge. It's it's really something I, I look at I look at Bronicon <coughs> as a whole, and I'm like, 
really, I just wish I could split myself into 10 and just go for everything because it's just, I, I can sense that, you know, it's just something that's going to fly by so fast because so many things are happening. Yeah. You want to be at every one of I, them. It's just... I, I can totally understand, man. It's like one of those things where I want to experience everything. Yeah, and, you know, you on top of that, you got things like, actually, the hall, those are event halls. Then you've got the artist alley. Then you've got the marketplace. Oy. And there's, there's just so many things happening in one yep. place. And, you know, people say, you go there, you forget to eat. <laughs> because just... <laughs> yeah, and here's, here's... Okay, if you guys are going to BruniCon, here's one of the... It's not if, it's when. Yeah, okay, <laughs> if and when you go to BruniCon, here's a few things that I want you to remember. Always have uh, two showers a day, three meals a day, and... Um, what was it again? I forgot. Uh, keep yourself hydrated. Honey. Hydrated, yeah. yes, hydrated. Yeah. So basically, power hose and feed bag <laughs> is what you're saying, and maybe a drip. That's what you need to go to BronyCon. Just carry that stuff with you and your gold. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you have ex. You make sure you have money, like enough money to s- spend the day or spend your weekend at BronyCon, and have f- transport money and stuff. Uh, make sure you have food, like. Keep yourself fed. Like, um, two meals a day is good. One meal a day is also good. Like, just keep yourself fed, please. And also, shower, please. We need to shower. Oh, yes. we, we don't need BOs. Like, BOs is a big no-no. Not everyone's musk is attractive. And, um, well, if, if there's a bit more time on the show, I'll just like to share a bit of things that I learned through preparing oh, for birth. Yeah. Okay, first of all... Um, when it comes to showers and traveling, if you're traveling on a shoestring budget like me, you're going to be relying a lot on stuff that you can find. First of all, we I found out BWI Airport, which is the nearest airport to BronyCon, does not have showers. Ooh. So if you want a shower, you're going to have to get yourself a place to stay. You're going to have to check into your hotel, things like that. Um, apparently, from what I learned, check into the Hilton is at 4 p.m. So if you arrive any earlier... Well, hopefully there'll be enough bronies in the lounge to keep you entertained unless the security guard throws you out. It's always good if you can get a friend who's around there or who's going to BronyCon because, you know, it's it's a, it, for those of you who aren't American, it's a totally strange whole new world. And I can't I can't imagine. I The last time I was in America was when I was four years old and my parents brought me. That was 22 <laughs> years ago. I am completely oblivious to the America of today. I, it'll be my first time setting foot so in a place so far away from home. And that's why I'm really nervous about this. It's something completely new. And I'm doing this on a really shoestring budget so a lot of people who'll be listen to, listening to this will be like oh Daniel you're so lucky you can go to BronyCon yes I am lucky because you know getting the visa is part of the problem American visas are difficult to get mm-hmm. but in terms of spending going to BronyCon is a real sacrifice you've got to be, it's, it's not something that you can say you can decide on just like that you've got to really sit down and think about it and it took me weeks to sit down and think and to sort it out especially those people in the panel that I'll be talking with we've got 90 time from Indonesia we've got Buckweiser from the Philippines we've got uh, Charlie from KL and then there's mm-hmm. me same thing too. Charlie the uh, doctor who is on this show or was on this show before like I played the games yep. with him so yeah say hi to him too mm-hmm. and he's um, we're, we're going a long 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 way we're going to the other side of the mm-hmm. world for a lot of us, we don't earn in a currency like the US dollar. And it's, you know, like Norman mentioned, we don't want to get in too much detail, but the Malaysian ringgit crashed against the US dollar last year and hasn't recovered completely. So it's a real uphill struggle for a lot of us who go for BronyCon. And I would say that if you can afford it, please think about mm-hmm. it. It's not exactly the first thing that you should think think about. It took a long, long time for me to actually sit and ponder and wonder whether this is the right decision. And in fact, up to a month before today, I was still pondering whether I made the right decision and whether I should be doing this or not. But, you know, eventually when BronyCon said, hey, we'll approve of your panel, come on and show show off and, you know, TrotCon approve of the panels as well. And it kind of it kind of became this, um, it, it's it's like a, a study trip and mm. things like that because we you know we organize conventions in this part of the region we want to learn from the best we have none of us in this bunch of us who are going have been to a real pony convention you know per se you know like those that happen and those that began the journey the ones that we have are tuned very finely to the asian audience that we all know and mm-hmm. love yeah. so this is going to be the first time we're going to be seeing a lot of these things and yeah like for me I'm not going to be flying to Baltimore, actually. Ooh, you're going to where now? 
I'm actually flying to New York and I'm taking a bus oh. down because it's uh, you know I needed to make sure it fit within my yeah. budget that way I I could not aff- I simply could not afford to fly straight to yeah. Baltimore. So like you mentioned before, it's like this shoestring budget. Like you have to do a lot it of thinking. It's a shoestring yeah. budget. It's a lot of thinking, and um, perhaps you might say, "Oh, Daniel, you're an inspiration for me to go to BronyCon." I hope that you know your priorities will be something that you hold very tightly because, really, this is a trip that has taken up a huge chunk of my budget is taken up a huge chunk of my life savings it is for some of you you'll call it a suicide journey but yes uh i made my decision it was a difficult decision to make it was a decision that took a long time to make i would say please take the time think about it bronicon is bronicon it will be there for the next at least six years so if you can't do it this year next year think about it sit down make sure that you know what mm-hmm. you're doing because this is not something you should do on your yeah. house and for me, my story to you is that I was originally planning to go, but I'm not in a really good spot previously. And the visa was one thing. I was afraid that if I were to apply, they would reject it. And uh, applying for the visa is about 150 or 140. The visa application is 160 yeah. US dollars. And when <laughs> you apply, you will never see that 160 ever again, regardless whether you get yeah, it or not. Yeah, so that is one of the risks that I was not ready to make because um, making that risk and making that um, visa thing is like okay if I got rejected like $160 gone and and if you times that by 3 or 3.1 uh, was it 3.5 now? was it the dollar then? it's 4 4.2 and if you times the dollar by 4 that's what you get right now with the Malaysian ringgit so mm. for me I had to weigh the pros and cons about um having about 400 bucks to spend on life or spend on a visa that I may or may not get. Yeah, food is more important. Life and living, yes, all of yes. that. But if you can spare the money, then great. Go to Bronicom, but yeah. a lot of the time... And times, also at the same time, always... too, um, because I... Um, the whole thing with that was um, my dad, he travels a lot and he gets the flyer miles. So... Um, flyer miles get you reward for cheaper flights, quote unquote cheaper flights. So, oh, okay. with that, eh, plane tickets won't hurt that much. But in the end, um, since I'm not going, my dad has arranged traveling to go to Australia to meet, like I mentioned earlier before, the new nephew. So, money is gone to dad for family. So, way more important family and each other. Yep, true that. And it's a balance now. So you need to weigh your options. Like, should I go to BronyCon or should I not? Like Dan, he mentioned that, hey, it is something that I want to and I am willing to take the risk. As for me, I am not willing to take the risk now. Probably I'll do it next year or uh, the next year. Or next year, like two next years. How do you do that? Next year, next year? It's like, yeah, next yeah. year. But still... That'd be fair enough. I, that gives you time to plan as well and save up. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and hope that the Malaysian ringgit will strengthen up its currency in a few years' time. But still, it's one of those things where we need, or I personally need to plan. And for you at home who are listening to this and planning on going, um, think carefully. Think long and hard about this because you're spending a huge amount of money to go there. And it's a big risk on your financials. Like if you're an American, still, that also weighs in on your financials too because you spend a lot of money. It's not easy. And yeah, uh, sorry to bring down the mood. Anyway. It's like, how dare you be sensible, Norman? I know, it's not like me, right? You being a grown-up and responsible and stuff. Dang. Yeah, I have bills to pay. Yeah, I hear you. So anyway, with that... Uh, we reached the end of the show. Sorry for bringing down the mood a little near the end. It's, well... <laughs> well, it's important. I mean, it's, as I said, you know, I, I'm not on this call to inspire people to, like, jump up and say, I want to go to BronyCon too. It's like, yeah, if you want to come to BronyCon, please do, but, you know, have be get your priorities mm-hmm. right. True that. No, even if, even if you can, it's still a big sacrifice, mm-hmm. so get your priorities yeah. right. Because you have to remember that certain people have jobs, and certain people with jobs are not able to get leave from work. So, yeah, some people who wants to go to BronyCon really, really bad have to quit jobs so they can go to 
Brony Con. Uh, you should never reach that level again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Unless your job sucks and you want to quit and, you know, you take this as this grace period holiday, then maybe it's fine. But, you know, case by case, be sensible like Norman yeah. said. Dan, thanks for coming on, man. It's my pleasure, Norman. Thank you for letting me back yeah, in. <laughs> no problem, man. Like, you you have been you have been a part of the show. You did lots to get the show up and running on the international level. I yeah, still you on, you know, pushing cart most yeah, of the time. No problem. So, um, Dan, the whole thing about the shout-outs is not here anymore, but something tells me that you want to do the shouting. Uh, it's not really a shout-out. I um, It's more of a... I mean, I, I hate to end things on sad notes, but... I think this mm-hmm. needs to be said. Um, this is uh, kind of a shout out to the family and friends of Melodic Pony, who's a Pony musician. He passed away yesterday morning uh, of a stroke at the age of 27, and he's been one of the musicians who's produced beautiful orchestral works. Check out check out his um, SoundCloud and his uh, Bandcamp, which is uh, Melodic Pony. So our dearest condolences from here in Malaysia, from all of us at Crystal Empire Records as well. Yeah. Sorry to hear about that. That oh, no, that was just tragic. There's no good segue around this, but um, I am going to take a break. <laughs> uh, it's not because of Melodic Pony, but it's... Remember that thing I told you guys earlier before about me going visiting a nephew in the Australias? Yeah, so that's going to be happening on the 4th of July weekend, like that whole week. Oh! Yeah, oh, oh, so oh. that's going to be me not... Recording, not editing. So, yeah, I'm going to take a week off. Um, I, I actually might be on the bus to Baltimore <laughs> on the midnight of the 4th of July. They'll be like, I'm going to see the fireworks going Woo-hoo! off on the bus window. Yay. <laughs> nice. Across three states. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. <laughs> and how many time zones? One time zone? Two time zone? No, just uh, one, just one. All right. So, anyway, for me, um, I'll be heading off to Australia. And specifically in Perth, I'll be hanging around right. there. So yeah, if you guys want to hang, you can always reach me on the Twitters. Uh, no, Twitters is a bad place to go. Um, <laughs> I got no idea. I'm very shut in. Email. Yeah, email. That's the place. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, and if you want to contact me, you can always do that at ambitionshowgmail.com. You can also tweet at SweetieBot because I'm bringing along that bot. You can reach the SweetieBot at the MBS show. And for me... You can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. Currently tickling my fancy is food. I love to make sandwiches. And I saw this one post on the Facebook, and I did it. Like, I did a sandwich. Like, um, long story short, it... Oh, the yeah. sandwich. Long story short, it's a French toast sandwich with hot dogs and cheese. So, yay. Sandwich. I know. So, that's where you can... Norman, you're wicked. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, that's where you can get me. Then, where can the people at home find you? If you want to follow me online, I'm at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E on Twitter and um, pretty much everywhere else. If you want to find out more or if you forgot what I said just about 20 minutes ago, you can log on to theasiandelegation.com. That's theasiandelegation.com. You can find out about where we'll be, what we'll be presenting, and the people on our panel. There's a little uh, profile of what is uh, who will be speaking on our panel and the stuff we'll be giving out. So help us spread the word if you're an Asian brony, if you're within Southeast Asia or anywhere in the world, really, and you want to just say, hey, we're bronies in Southeast Asia, we exist, you know. Um, while I can't bring you all there personally, please do help share this panel uh, website, share this on Facebook, on Twitter, on your social media. Tell the world, hey, we're going to be at BronyCon. An Asian bunch of kids are going to be at BronyCon to tell you that the fandom exists over here. And we're doing fine. We're doing great, in fact. Yeah. I'm going to do my part two by doing Thanks, this Norman. show that I always do every week. <laughs> Thank you very much, No Norman. problem, man. <laughs> so anyway, Lurk, where can the people find you? Oh, you can always find me at lurkacat.deviantart.com or facebook.com forward slash Highland Bronies. I'm part of that crazy group. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And I was going to say, like, you know, you don't you don't find Lurker, Lurker finds you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's always true. Usually. Yeah, that's always true. If I know of you, I've been stalking yeah, you and I'm always watching. Yeah, I remember the last time you stalked who? Um, Finn the Pony? Yeah. Yeah, I told him. I introduced myself as 
Hi, Finn. I'm a fan of yours. I've been stalking you for a while now. <laughs> oh, and he laughed nervously. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. how you know you get into them and you spread fear and they'll remember you. Yep, true. Anyway, also please then subscribe and like us on iTunes, YouTube and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page and also subscribe to our newest podcast, the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion that is also on the iTunes and Stitcher Radio. It's there Please do Because that show Needs the love too Because well we Review show stuff You've got the pigeon there too So anyway I have been Norman Sanzo I've been Daniel Anthony And I've been The Lurker Cat And we'll guys See you next week With another amazing episode Of the MBS show See ya yep, I'll see you in Two weeks time At BronyCon Bye 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 Hope y'all have a good time I'll probably bump into I Love Kim Possible a lot over there because he's a guest of honor. She. Let me do that again. Three. <laughs> Before, because I'm going to see this person. She, see her in person, she might punch me in the face. So. <laughs> you learned to dodge. It's not, it's, not like, it's not like something that I can say, oh, sorry, never mind. I'm not going to see you, so it doesn't matter. No. no. <laughs> Three. Three, two, one. And, and to tweet at her is at the MBS show at gmail. Uh, at the MBS show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for the habit. In before someone tweets the Gmail, official Gmail account, and be like, hey, where do I subscribe to you guys? What? So, anyway. Um-